Hello and welcome to this new episode of Free Science 365. As we talked about in our last two episodes, placebo effect is when an inert thing causes a positive effect on our health because of the expectation of good within certain rituals and settings. So then naturally, the question arises, what if the rituals, the settings, the systems, the trust are all in place, but the expectation instead of being positive is negative. What if the person receiving the placebo pill is told by the doctor that it might harm them, make them sick, or increase their pain? What would happen then? And you'll be surprised to know that in certain conditions, the negative expectations can result in negative effects on a person's health. Today, we'll talk about the what, how, and why of this evil phenomena, which Dr. Walter Kennedy termed in 1961 as the nocebo effect. In simple terms, the nocebo effect occurs when a patient takes an inert, harmless substance, such as a placebo, and reports harmful side effects, all because he or she expected so. So basically, expectations affect the appearance or disappearance of symptoms, as well as the results of the treatment itself. In fact, William Stewart Halstead, the father of American surgery, would not carry out his surgical operations on the patients who were not 100% convinced of a positive outcome. He explained this on the basis of his observation that patients with a pessimistic attitude tended to deteriorate in spite of all biological indications of a full recovery. Take Sam Schumann was diagnosed with last stage liver cancer in the 1970s. His doctor said, you got maximum three months, you are in the end stage of liver cancer, and this can't be helped. So Schumann duly died in the allotted time frame of three months. After his death, they did an autopsy, and the autopsy revealed that his doctors had diagnosed him wrongly. The tumor was very tiny, and it hadn't spread. He didn't die from cancer. What he died from was the negative expectation, the nocebo effect of believing the doctor's wrong diagnosis and believing that he was on his way to die of cancer and that it will take him exactly three months to die. Schumann's misdiagnosis and the subsequent death shares many similarities, many of the crucial elements found in hex death. What is hex death? It's basically where a tribal witch doctor trusted by the whole tribe, points a bone or a stick to one person in the tribe and curses him to be a dead person within the next so many days. Something similar happened here. A trusted doctor pronounced a death sentence for Schumann, which was accepted unquestioningly by the victim, who then started to act upon that belief. It became a self-fulfilling prophecy. When I was researching about nocebo effect, a rather curious case appeared again and again in different medical journals and in in a way it's a bit funny but let me tell you the story and then you decide if it's funny to you or not so basically what happens is in november of 2006 a 26 year old man is presented to the emergency room and what he had done is he had an argument with his ex-girlfriend after that he decided to take his own life so he swallowed 29 capsules of an experimental drug that he obtained from a clinical trial that was testing a new antidepressant drug. When he arrived at the hospital, he was shaking, sweating, and he had a pulse rate of 110, which is extremely high. His blood pressure was very low. It was 80 by 40. In a normal person of his age, it should be something near to 120 by 80. So it was really, really low blood pressure and very high heartbeat. When doctors worked for over four hours, they gave him six liters of saline injections, which was helpful in him getting his blood pressure back to about 100 by 62. Not the best case scenario, but still better than 80 by 40. But worryingly, his heart was still beating at about 106 beats per minute. So that's not a very good situation. What finally cured the patient wasn't anything the emergency staff did. Instead, a doctor from the same clinical study that he was undergoing, you know, he was given the antidepressants from a clinical study. The doctor who was concerned with this clinical study came 
to the emergency room and he told the patient that these antidepressants were not real antidepressants he was actually randomly chosen to be given the placebo so he didn't overdose on real antidepressant medicines but rather on benign placebo the proverbial sugar pills that's right he overdosed on placebos the good news is that after this thing was revealed by the doctor to him within 15 minutes his blood pressure stabilized to 126 over 80 and his heartbeat stabilized at around 80 beats per minute so it's a bit funny because he had a nocebo effect but this nocebo effect was caused by a placebo so in a way it's like a comedy of errors but it's not just one case it has been estimated that 25 percent of all people taking part in clinical trials and receiving placebo medicine actually report nocebo effect and that begs the question how does the nocebo effect work now let's talk about a study by psychologist Irving Kirsch and Juliana Mazzoni they did an experiment they asked a group of students to inhale a sample of normal air air that you have in your house or in your office just normal air the students were told that this air contained a suspected environmental toxin they also warned that upon inhaling this suspected environmental toxin students might undergo headache nausea itchy skin and drowsiness half of the group of students also watched a woman inhaling this gas and showing symptoms of headache nausea itchy skin and drowsiness the result students who inhaled were more likely to report these symptoms than those who did not symptoms were also more pronounced in women because they saw the video of a woman inhaling this gas and developing the symptoms uh, in another experiment carried out at the beginning of the 1980s a group of student volunteers agreed to participate in a study in which they received simulated electrical stimulation of the central nervous system they were asked to put on a helmet on their heads and they were warned they might feel headache after an electrical stimulation was given to them two-thirds of the students reported symptoms of headache but in reality they were never given the electrical stimulation these and other similar experiments suggest that the nocebo effect is caused by three psychological mechanisms first receiving information about the possible negative effects of a medicine or a drug and having the expectation that they will occur so the doctor says well we are giving this medicine and these negative effects might occur to you that alone can then trigger the nocebo effect the second is when you had a negative experience of your own and the third way is by observing such effect in other people this results in increased amount of cortisol in your body Cortisol is the hormone that's related with stress and anxiety. And it seems that anxiety plays a very important role in triggering the nocebo effect. People who have more anxiety have more chance of getting affected by the nocebo effect. To further understand the mechanism of how nocebo effect works, experiments were done where changes in dopamine activity and endorphins were monitored with the aid of PET scan. The result the brain stopped making dopamine and endorphins now if you remember from our past video on placebo effect you will see that nocebo effect mechanism is the reverse of placebo effect in placebo effect the brain starts making dopamine and endorphins while in the nocebo effect the brain stops making endorphins and decreases dopamine instead it increases the amount of cortisol in the body also prostaglandin levels in the saliva of the volunteers and patients was increased prostaglandin is this neurotransmitter that is responsible for the sensation of pain in your body so in a nutshell all these experiments go on to prove that the psychological effect of receiving negative false information or observing a negative response can affect the biochemistry of your body in four ways first is decreased dopamine second is decreased endorphins third is increased cortisol which is stress and anxiety hormone and fourth is increased prostaglandin which is the hormone for pain while our understanding of the nocebo effect is still in its infancy we can recognize that certain types of people in certain situations 
can trigger the nocebo effect. For example, people with dementia, those with a lot of anxiety, people with pessimistic personality traits, and those with the so-called type A personality, which is characterized by high levels of stress, aggression, and hostility. Now, these people are more susceptible to the nocebo effect. So, when doctors or the caregivers are dealing with these people, they can, uh, instead of just giving them medical care or administering the medicine, they should also try to ease their anxiety. That can help reduce the negative effects of nocebo effect. They are helping the patient get the full benefits of the medicine and avoid the nocebo effect to a great degree. So, that's all the video for today. Thank you for watching and if you like it, please uh, click the like button. If you really, really like it, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.